Okay, the recording is on. Thank you everyone for joining uh, this course, BC314 Media and Technology in Ministry. Uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Maybe Aaron, if you could pray. Now we, we can get started, please. Sure, Pastor. Let me pray. Thank you, Lord, for um, blessing this another new day. And thank you, Lord, for um, giving us the opportunity to learn this um, specific subject, media and technology, Lord. Lord, as uh, you have called us to be influencer, your channel of blessing to many, Lord, uh, help us all to be excellent in this uh, subject. So, Lord, I pray and ask for your strength, your wisdom, to clothe each and every one of us to sustain the kingdom. So, Lord, bless everyone, and I submit the rest of the session into your loving hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for connecting to the class today. Um, so, we have been in this chapter on uh, digital equipment. Uh, basically, we're just kind of getting an exposure to uh, the equipment side of uh, things. So we talked about, um, we went through a list of the software side that, you know, okay, this is what we use generally for the media work. And then we started talking about the different uh, pieces of equipment. We talked about cameras. Then uh, we talked about the PA system last week. Now, just to get an idea so that um, uh, when uh, you know when you're dealing with people in the church and or so you know and you have to you know uh, make sure that your PA system is good uh, you'll have some background some information on what to do and so on uh, today we'll talk about uh, video production and uh, and then uh, after this we get into um, live streaming so what actually goes up what actually happens when you're doing a live stream of an event and so on. Okay, so I'm not going to get into all the details, but enough for us uh, as we, uh, you know, as we engage in doing video productions. Now, of course, uh, these days, uh, many of us record videos on our phones, uh, on our smartphones, and uh, for many purposes, um, that is enough. You know, if you just want to record something that's happening, or uh, you know, just to remember something, okay, yeah, you, you, we record that on our phones. Uh, but uh, when we are talking about ministry work, and um, we are thinking about maybe you know recording, uh, let's say it could be anything, it could be a video announcement, or you want to do a small, short, even thirty-second promotion for a seminar you're having or a conference you're doing or you're planning to do uh, a video recording of daily devotional so that you could share with uh, your congregation or you're doing a, a, you know the video recording of your sunday service or uh, it could be maybe you want to produce short films uh, you know maybe five minute short films um, which is you know very a very good way to communicate uh, to get a message across these days. Uh, people uh, enjoy watching meaningful, impactful, short videos. So it could be doing something like that. Uh, so, you know, so there are different ways in which video can be used uh, in, in the ministry. And so for those kind of purposes, uh, we need something more than just our own phone camera. Certain things, you know, you can use your mobile phone, your smartphone, do a recording of a video and go on. Uh, but then if you're looking at recording a Sunday service or things like that, then you definitely need something more. And so uh, the goal here in, in, in this part of the, of the digital equipment is just to expose us to, you know, this, these are the things and the uh, equipment you're using. These are things you need to think about uh, uh, so that, you know, when, when you get involved in, in some way, doing that, uh, you'll be aware of these things. So I'm going to share the PDF and we will um, go through uh, some information here. So video production, that's what we're talking about today. So, you know, you, you, in the church, in the ministry, uh, we could use videos for so many different things. Uh, we use it for doing our video announcements. 
you know, back in time, uh, in the early years, we had uh, somebody come up and make the announcements. So they will have to remember, you know, or we'll have to write it down for them, five things you have to announce and so on and so forth. Then we thought, why don't we put, put it on video? So, you know, you can be creative, you can put music, you can add sound and uh, you can, you know, the same announcements can be presented in a very, you know, nice and creative way. So at some point we started doing our announcements using video and also since we had many locations, uh, we could make sure that you know all the announcements are made uh, across the six locations that, that these things are played in. Um, then you could you know you could do uh, promotional videos. Um, you could do video reports of you know uh, of events or conferences or mission trips. So uh, that's a very useful thing. You know when we go on mission trips, uh, we get pictures and we record videos there. Then we put it in a short report, video report, and we show it to people in the church. So it's a great way for them to know, hey, this is what actually happened on the mission trip or what is happening in our outreach churches and so on. Um, so we could use videos for so many things. You, know, you could think about short films, movies, music videos, uh, so many other things. So uh, just some general information here. So when we talk about you know video production, uh, this actually happens in three main steps, right? So if you want to produce a video, you go through these three steps all the time, right? And of course the steps will vary depending on how, how simple or complex a video you're producing. But what are the three steps? First is a pre-production. So in the pre-production, you're planning, yeah, you're strategizing, you're thinking about the whole thing. Uh, you yeah, think about strategy, what are you trying to communicate, to whom you're trying to communicate, what, what is the message you want to leave? Uh, you're talk, talking about the script, meaning what is going to be said. You're talking about this. You're thinking about the set, meaning you know what, what is the background, the the the, uh, the props and all that, and within which you want to record the video. Uh, you're thinking about the cast, who are the people going to be there recorded. You think about the crew, the people who are going to do the audio and video recording, and so on. So all of this happens in pre-production. You have to think about all these details, right? So there's a lot of work go that goes into it uh, in the pre-production. And if it's, uh, if it's a video that's happening over and over again, then, you know, you can continue using a lot of this thinking that has been, ha ha that has happened. You can, you know, build on it for every successive shoot. So there's pre-production. You've got to plan everything very carefully. Then there is a production. That means this is the actual shooting of the video, scene by scene, you know, so on. So uh, the cast comes in, the crew are on there, and all the equipment is there, and then you shoot the video. Uh, a lot of things that uh, go into shooting the video. You want to make sure everything is, you know, right, that the message is conveyed, uh, audio, video recording quality is good, and so on. You shoot the video. After the video is shot, there's still more work. What is the work? It's called post-production. This is where everything is brought together. You know, uh, the video, the music, mm, uh, syncing the audio and the video. You may need to edit the video, cut out, you know, things that are not supposed to be there. Uh, add the music, add special effects. Uh, there may be other graphics and things that you want to add to the actual uh, video. So that also is a lot of work. So really, if you're talking about even a 30 second video, right? Even a 30 second video, uh, a lot of work goes into it, uh, depending on, of course, what you're doing. Now, if you're doing a 30 second promotion video, for example, we want to do a, you know, a 30 second promotion for our Bible college, then in the pre-production, uh, here, here's what we do. Now, now here we're not shooting any real people. Uh, we're just bringing together images and so on. So, um, the script has to be written, right? So that means what is it? What is the message we want to convey in this 30 second video to promote the Bible college, right? So I would say like, you know, um, and where are we going to play this video? Okay, we're going to um, do this promotion video, see on YouTube uh, and social media. So YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, you know, just 30 second, we're making this video available. Now, the thing is this, 
if you're going to run a promotion on YouTube, uh, prom uh, this video promotion, uh, people uh, are forced to watch only the first five seconds. After those five seconds, they can skip the video. So even if you put a lot of effort for 30 seconds, they are not going to watch all 30 seconds. Uh, it's quite possible after five seconds, that's a skip, right? Now, of course, there are other promotions you can do on, 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 on YouTube where you force them to watch the entire duration of your video or whatever uh, it is. But generally, if you do a normal YouTube promotion, people are only required to watch five seconds and that's counted as a view uh, and they click the after five seconds and skip it. So really, uh, you've got to get your message across. The main message, you've got to get it across within five seconds. So you're going to plan your script to make sure that in the five seconds, you do communicate what you want. Now, you may have seen many ads, YouTube ad videos, promotions, where in the first five seconds, you don't know what the video is about. No. And you just, you, you tap skip, you go forward. So what has happened? You know, in the five seconds, they failed to communicate who they are, what they are, what they want you to do, et cetera. So it's, it's a waste. So you have to think like that. You know, you have to have a strategy. If I'm, if, if I'm going to promote this video on YouTube, I know how that platform works. I know what's the re re restrictions. So I have to, in the first five seconds, get my message across and be convincing enough for them to want to watch the remaining 25 seconds or whatever. Right? So those things you have to, it's part of your pre-production. You're thinking about it, your script. So you write your script to make sure within five seconds you got a message. Visit apcbiblecollege.org for free Bible courses. Five seconds. It's got. So you've got your main message across. That is, you've got the website URL, apcbiblecollege.org. They've heard it. They've seen it on the thing. So you've got that message across. Second, you want to know there's free courses or whatever. So it's something that's you want to get, or whatever you want to get, you know, for spiritual Bible college or whatever, something. But in that five seconds, you get your message across. And then after that, you think about, you know, what else you want to say. So, uh, and then you want to think about, okay, what is the audience you're reaching? You're reaching a global audience. So you, so you want to show people from different parts of the world because you're, you're reaching out to a global audience. It's not just for one particular city, right? Uh, and uh, what else do you want people to know, right? So that's in your script and all that. So all that goes in the pre-production. Then you, once you give it to your media team, they will put together the video based on your script and so on. And in this particular example of a promotion video, uh, you may not need to go and shoot anybody. You may use pre-existing video segments and pictures and things like that. You're producing the video. Sometimes you'll have to go and shoot. You know, you have people acting, your cast, they're doing certain things and you have to record. Then after that, they have to work on it, put everything together. Then you kind of, you know, you go over it, review it and so on. So three steps, right? Pre-production, production, post-production. Post -production. And, and, um, the person editing it will put all this together. Now, uh, one thing we have to keep in mind is that when it comes to video production, there are always, you know, constantly there are new devices that are coming out, always getting better, better resolution, better this and better that. Yeah, so it's 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 constantly improving, and also there are new video formats that are coming out, right? And new resolutions. So 4K, 8K, higher resolution, you know, higher quality uh, videos. So um, uh, just that you can, you know, you don't yourself have to worry about it. Uh, you let the media team handle that part, you know, um, but just be, be mindful that um, there's, things are changing constantly in this space. Now, as far as 
the equipment uh, is concerned, you know, how would you go about? And I just want to kind of uh, talk about the different parts of the equipment, but uh, I'll just share with you what we do at APC. You know, at least for many years, from the time we started, uh, we didn't buy our equipment, you know, uh, because these things are very expensive, right? These cameras and so on. So for a long time, we just rented it, right? And uh, and even now we still do, like we, we may own uh, maybe one or, you know, just one or two cameras, but uh, every Sunday we rent, uh, we just, um, you know, we have a vendor uh, with, okay, the, the man will come with the camera, with the tripod, with the cameraman is there and uh, they do the recording for us. You know, and we pay them for it. So it's, one is, uh, uh, it works out well for us because we don't have to pay huge amounts to buy the cameras. Uh, and, uh, you know, if a new camera comes out, it's his responsibility to buy it and bring it. Uh, we're not, uh, maintenance is not ours, everything, you know, they just come and record for those, you know, couple of hours on Sunday or whatever we're doing. So uh, it's fine if you, if you have the money to buy, it's, uh, you can find out what's best for what you're trying to use it for. But uh, I would just suggest, you know, uh, just rent it for whatever event you want to you know, record and so on. And uh, the advantage is, you know, like I said, you don't have to worry about the maintenance. You don't have to worry about upgrades or different lens or whatever, all those things they take care of. You just rent it, you just pay for them to come and shoot and record for you. But of course you need the right camera. And then not only do we have cameras that are fixed on tripods, but you also need portable cameras. Um, uh, typically the GoPro. So for example, we use the GoPro. Uh, we attach a GoPro next to where the drummer is sitting. So uh, in our Sunday service, right? Um, so um, you're actually having multiple feeds that are coming in from different cameras. So imagine the Sunday service, you've got uh, multiple uh, cameras, these big cameras on tripods from different angles. Then you've also got these portable cameras that are stuck in certain places. These are small cameras that are fixed wherever, where there's a lot of moving, uh, you know, for example, like I said, the drummer, so that you can show the drummer also as part of the service and it, it gives it a good feel. So we use a small GoPro placed near where the drummer is and every now and then we, we show him. Uh, so that's one way of showing, uh, uh, you know, uh, using portable cameras or if the person is themselves, they are moving and you want to see something happening with them, you'd use something like a GoPro. Then of course you have a tripod as part of the equipment. Then there are external microphones that are needed, right? So uh, you can use uh, mics with a windshield like this that'll pick up uh, the sound, or if it's for a speak speaking, then of course you can use wireless mics and like we, said uh, in last week, uh, the sound, of course, when it's coming from the worship team, all gets mixed in the mixer. And then there's output that goes uh, for the video feed. Uh, the, there's audio recording and also for the live stream, there's an output that goes. So, uh, or if you're just recording a single person speaking, you may use a single mic, a wireless mic or a mic with a windshield that's positioned, held somewhere in place, right? Um, then the next part of your video production uh, is the lighting and reflector kit. So again, all of this you can hire. So again, we, uh, we for, for a long time, we never bought these things, we just hired them. And uh, uh, now, so you have lighting, they come up with these stands and there are different lighting. You you will all, you have the halogen lighting or you have the LED lighting uh, where you can control, you know, uh, the brightness or the warmth that comes from the uh, LEDs. So you can control it. And again, you hire these things. You don't have to buy them. And uh, what is interesting is uh, this green screen. 
uh, they call it the chroma. Uh, if you use a green screen, you don't have to worry about the background, you know. So uh, during while that they're doing video editing, they will just replace the green screen with any kind of background. Like you know, you could put a background like a living room, or uh, you know, you can put a outdoor background, maybe out in the jungle or on the beach or whatever. You can re whatever is green uh, gets replaced by something. Uh, that that you want, like an image. So uh, the advantage of this is uh, you don't have to worry about the set. That means you don't have to worry about where I'm going to shoot, the decor, you know, uh, I, I need this, I need that. It is, sometimes it's kind of expensive or you may not find a suitable place. So what you do is you just uh, shoot with a completely green background and um, everything that's green is replaced by an image, a graphic. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, if somebody's standing here or people are sitting here, uh, it's, uh, you know, you could put whatever appropriate background it is. And of course, lighting is very important uh, and uh, all this thing you, you can hire for your shoot, right? And uh, the people who are doing the shoot, they will take care of all the adjusting of the light, the brightness and so on uh, while they are doing it um, and just be aware there there are LEDs um, LED lighting as well that's available today and there's what they call as a reflector kit so basically it's this big round uh, reflecting surface it got usually you see them carrying it in black bags they unzip the bag and uh, and this thing just reflects light they reflect light on the subject or um, you know however they the lighting is needed uh, to, to provide proper lighting. So this is also something that you can just hire. You don't, don't, and what I'm saying, what I want to say is uh, you don't have to waste, I don't know, don't have to spend money to buy any of these things. Just hire them for uh, the day of your shoot uh, for, um, you know, for how many hour, hour, hours you want it, just hire, hire it for that and you're done. You, it's all good. You don't have to uh, worry about, uh, uh, renting uh, these things, I mean, uh, purchasing these things. Um, the other thing, uh, some other things that you would need is, uh, it's called the gimbal, which is uh, for, for, a, for a camera that you're holding on hands or you're moving. So some cameras, you'll put them on a tripod. Uh, some cameras, people will be moving around. And so the gimbal helps them stabilize, make sure that the camera is held uh, at the right angle or properly. Um, software for editing that we have already mentioned earlier. Hardware, I'll, I'll just mention some things you need to keep in mind for a hardware for computer. So these things, uh, again, in the early days, the editing and the, the hardware and software, it was rented. We didn't buy it. Uh, we just gave somebody outside to edit everything for us and give it to us. So we didn't spend money on it in the early days. Only later on, uh, we bought our own computer for video editing and uh, software and people to do it. Uh, people would were hired or employed by the church to do it. But in the early days, uh, everything was rented, right? We just paid the people what they, for the work they did to give us the uh, video. Uh, other things you would have to think about is uh, captions on your video. So sometimes, of course, you can have um, transcription. That means uh, the, um, the voice to text translation would take place. Or uh, that's the closed captions will show it. Or you display text on your video. So you think about that I need to show text. And... Uh, Sometimes this has to be done while you're shooting the video, right? So for example, uh, during our Sunday sermons, uh, while the sermon is being preached, uh, you will find the scripture verse coming up or you'll find you know, key points coming up. Uh, uh, you can do it in, in post-production, but uh, uh, just to make things uh, easier, if you do it while it's happening, you have your captions and all of that coming up at the right time uh, in sync with the video, the voice, and the captions. So they're all in sync. It can be done. 
in under post editing and sometimes that's done but in a live service you need to think about that text that comes you know so you pre-plan that text so it's part of your pre-production work uh, you know all of these these are the scripture texts that should come up or these are the points that should come up um, and we will talk tomorrow i think when we talk about uh, live streaming you know how that is done that that comes up on the video other things you need is uh, memory cards because these videos, uh, of course, they take a lot of space. So you need to uh, uh, make sure you have a lot of memory cards. Uh, if you're doing live streaming, you need, a capture, you need capture cards that go from camera to computer. So then from camera, it goes, ultimately, it goes, it goes out to your computer and out to you know, the live stream. Uh, you need battery, uh, I mean, a plug to um if you want to plug the camera into the power source as a backup so so basically these are the things that you would need uh for your video production right if you're going to shoot a video uh these are things you know. so i'll just quickly run through it again uh one or more cameras yeah if, if it's a large event a stage so on you'll need m multiple cameras sometimes you'll have cameras on crane so you'll have a crane that moves around pans the audience or pans the stage with the camera attached to it so those things uh, portable cameras if there's a lot of action happening and you want to position a camera in a very you know a place where a person can't go and shoot then you'll use these portable cameras tripod mics um, lighting reflector kit so this is your lighting kit your background green screen if you you don't have a don't want to use a set um, lighting led lighting a reflector kit other things uh, the gimbal to stabilize the camera if it's not on tripod editing hardware and software take up the captions you want to come up on your video memory cards to store all the files the raw files Capture cards if you're going live streaming to connect the camera straight to the computer and power, you know, enough battery or should be able to plug it into power source. Okay. Then I've just mentioned a little bit here on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the computer specifications. So if you're planning to buy a computer, now, like I mentioned earlier, uh, in the initial days, we didn't buy, you know, we just let somebody do it outside for us. They took it and edited it. So we didn't have to buy a computer uh, because this hardware is expensive, right? Uh, but just to let you, you know, if you're planning to buy a computer for video editing, you need to look at a higher end, slightly than a normal, uh, a computer for a normal user, right? Because uh, you're dealing with very large files and uh, you need a lot of uh, processing power so the processors have to be more than just uh, for regular users. A lot of memory, uh, a lot of hard, hard drive space, so a lot of RAM and hard, hard disk space. Uh, you also need good graphic cards and preferably uh, a large screen so that person doing the editing uh, you know, can work on a big screen. These are basic things you have to think about if you're planning to buy a computer. Uh, ideally, you want a RAM. The memory should be around 32 GB uh, and or more. Uh, the more, the better. They can open up their files and so on. Uh, for the processor, uh, ideally, you want something uh, i7 or i9. Uh, uh, so you want a higher end or higher end processor and more number of processors, four or more processor cores. Uh, storage, that is the hard disk. Of course, you need a good SSD that is that they are fast and uh, as much as much space as you can afford. So usually they go into terabytes, you know, so one TB or so on. So, uh, so you need more. This is the minimum, but you need you know, higher end. Uh, you need a computer with a good graphics card, so um, that's important. You ask that what is the graphic card and make sure it's there. Uh, of course, good op uh, operating system, a large screen, of course, and uh, uh, a, a connection to 
quickly copy your file or your Thunderbolt port to quickly copy uh, the videos off of your um, um, the uh, wherever it's stored. You know, so typically you would end up on memory cards that come from the cameras, and then you'll have to connect them and load it up into your copy it into your computer. So you need a good port to do that. Right? So these are just general things to look out for if you're planning to buy a computer specifically for video editing. Uh, 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 the normal computer that you know that we use for day-to-day -day work uh, will will <clears throat> will not help. Uh, it may be okay if you're doing like a short thirty-second video, uh, but if you're planning to edit, you know, a five-minute video or a, anything bigger, uh, it it does it's it will become very slow, and so you need to have a good computer, right? So, in essence, this is what we need from a equipment side for video production. Um, and with this, you know, you could get started uh, and uh, produce videos. I would encourage you to think about it. Um, think about producing videos. It's a good, powerful way uh, to communicate a, a message or to communicate uh, to people. Uh, these days, people like to hear and see uh, and get a feel of uh, what's happening. Okay. So I will pause here for today. Tomorrow we're going to get into live streaming. That means this whole thing is going to happen live. That means you, you're not doing any post-production. Okay, you do your pre-production, you're planning everything. Production is happening and it's just two hours of a sermon or a conference or whatever, or you know. And you're not you're not editing afterwards. It goes live to the audience. And so Sorry, so what actually goes in? How, how is that configured? Uh, I'll share that with us uh, tomorrow, okay? So any questions on video production? Uh, uh, I've, you know, as far as uh, maybe you've tried something or um, uh, you have any questions on this? Anybody? You all good? Okay, so um, yeah, so we'll pick this up tomorrow. We will talk about live streaming tomorrow and uh, we will go forward, okay? Um, let's close in prayer. Anybody wants to take a moment, uh, please, uh, you could just pray and then we will uh, wrap up the class. Um, Thomas, could you pray with us? Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful time as we're learning the media equipments and all. Thank you, Dad, everything for your kingdom to reach many souls. Thank you, Father. In coming days, help us to use, utilize this knowledge to rent, do the things for the better video things and all, Father. Thank you, Father, as we're going to learn the live stream. Help us to invest our time and learn for the better things. We thank you. We praise you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, have a good afternoon. God bless. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor.